Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Old Reader, New Reader. So today we are doing Weapon X. Now I know that last week <laughs> um, I was pushing really hard for Wolverine and the X Men by Jason Aaron, but looks she like was. I overestimated my time a little bit. So backup plan, Weapon X. First of all, Weapon X is never the backup plan. Weapon <laughs> X is always the plan. <laughs> but yes, tonight we are talking about Weapon X. This is the classic Barry Windsor Smith run. Uh, it ran through Marvel Comics Presents, which was an anthology series that started in the 90s. And this particular segment ran from like, I want to say it ran from late ni- uh, 90 to 1991. It yeah. is. Uh, another thing to understand is that before this, we really didn't have an idea of Wolverine's past, right? Mm-hmm. Like we had we had a little bit of just scattered memories and things like that. Uh, we had a hint that maybe, you know, this adamantium was done by the government. But I mean, this and, and even after reading this, it's still like what's real, what's not. Yeah. Um. So this particular uh, story has been collected in just about every single format, uh, hardcover, oversized hardcover, trade paperback. And it is also in this omnibus right here, the Wolverine Omnibus Volume 1, which is being reprinted come April. So in case you don't own it here, uh, it will be reprinted in this wonderful, beautiful omnibus come April. Uh, Now, Barry Windsor Smith has... Uh, before this started, Barry Windsor Smith had been. Um, oh, and there's also we're also going to give a fifty dollar gift card to Cheap Graphic Novels uh, website. So stay tuned for that. We'll uh, we'll do it to. Uh, we're going to give it away to one of the, our viewers that's watching live. And so um, before th- this particular story started, Barry Windsor Smith had drawn a couple of issues of Wolverine. Uh, the biggest one being Uncanny X Men two hundred five. Uh, which is kind of the f- uh, the appearance of the Reavers, like early appearance of the Reavers with Lady Deathstrike. But Ooh. this right here, but that was with Chris Claremont. This is all Barry Windsor Smith. The pencils, the inks, the story, the colors, and even a lot of the lettering was Barry Windsor Smith. Like that's that's insane. That's like the dude just produced the comic book by himself. The only thing he didn't do was print it out. So it's insane to think of stuff like that. So this story, particularly this, the one that we're talking about ran through Marvel Comics 72 all the way to Marvel Comics Presents 84. Now that may seem like a lot of comics, but it's not. Keep keep in mind those were anthologies. So each one of those was eight issues with the exception of Marvel Comics Presents 84, which was a huge uh, giant size issue of Weapon X. So instead of eight pages, it was like 24 pages or something like that. But um, that's where we are today. And the omnibus and the trade paperback every, ever since 1992, this thing has been uh, made into a, uh, a collected edition has this beautiful forward by Larry Hama, who, my, if you've been a fan of the channel, is my favorite Wolverine writer. Like uh, Larry Hama's run on Wolverine is epic. Um, but so let, let's talk a little bit about this, Maddie. Let's let's talk about Weapon X. And I mean, it's, it's a pretty simple story. And do, would you like to talk? I've been going on for a little bit. No, so. I mean, I, I'm happy to. How do you take the reins on it? Okay. Um, so it's done in a non uh chronological order. Yeah. It's done in a Wolverine is drinking. He passes out. But he's also inside of this giant laboratory, mm-hmm. right? With, like, just wires going into him. Like, all these kind of test equipment. And we keep going back and forth. Like, he gets drunk. He gets kidnapped by these dudes that are dressed in suits. They take him back to this guy known as the Professor. And with the Professor, uh, obviously, he's bald. So you're like, is it... I think I remember reading this. I'm like, why is Professor right. X evil, right? No, no. Well, it's especially definitely... before you see him too, too much, like you... You see a lot of the dialogue between, like, what Wolverine is hearing, the dialogue right. people around him, and so you hear Professor a lot. And if, if you're someone that's read other X Men and haven't read this, it's like, wait, what's is this? 
you know, what is this? Is this, are they talking to him? Are they not? What's happening? Yeah. And, you know, and then there are three main characters in here, right? It's, this is probably one of the most unique Wolverine stories. I find my favorite Wolverine stories are always the ones that don't really feature him a lot. Like Wolverine 34 to me is probably top one of the top best Wolverine stories ever. This one here, it really is the story of Cornelius, uh, Hines, and mm-hmm. the Professor. Sounds like the people trapped at Gillian's Island, but it's not. It's these three people that are behind this Experiment X project that's going on. And they call it the Experiment X project, but and we all know what it becomes later on when the professor reveals he's not an experiment. Mm-hmm. He is a weapon. So they're testing out this subject, right? They're testing out Logan. That's all they keep kill- calling him. Uh, I think Heinz, the lady, is the only one that kind of humanizes him. She's like, oh, it's it's uh, Mr. Yeah. Logan, right? Yeah. And everybody's like, stop calling him that. You know, call him Experiment X. And let me just show you some of this beautiful artwork. Um in this omnibus so I can do it justice because this is Barry Windsor Smith's artwork. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, it's so detailed. Right? Like, the colors are wonderful. He he obviously did a very phenomenal job with it. There are some iconic images Mm -hmm. that have been, you know, brought out in live action movies and sequels to this, such as the Shiva scenario. Um, in the Weapon X ongoing series, but this is Weapon X. Long before Weapon Plus or Weapon 1 or Weapon 10, whatever the hell they wanted to retcon, it was just Weapon X. So uh, so that's practically it. Like These main three scientists, right, or one, (laughs) he doesn't even want to acknowledge that she's a scientist. She's more like a secretary, is what the professor keeps calling her, are experimenting, uh, putting adamantium into this uh, human. And then they find out, wait, he's not just a human, right? He is a homo superior. And that is a mutant. So that's why he's, a, he's able to regenerate. As a matter of fact, when they kidnap him, they shave him. Like his entire body is shaved. and he, Which is great, too, because that's how you kind of start off with some of this, right? Because he, he's been... <laughs> You know, you, when you first see him in the goo and everything, they're just having a conversation about, like, hey, who who shaped him? She did, like, a really shitty job. <laughs> like, no, I right. really just did it 30 minutes ago. Right. And and then by the end of the first issue, he's got just his full mane back and his full mm-hmm. hair. And here's one of these iconic images I was talking about. In this oh, yeah. Where he just goes berserk. I mean, this is kind of defines, like, him going into berserker mode right like Mm -hmm. they're and and they're like they're testing his limits too the whole time they're like well let's see how well he does against these wolves the wolves are like eating him and yeah and you know dr cornelius is like well we got to pull him back he's almost dead and you know professor's like no let's see how longer how much longer he can last so damn that was uh it was pretty intense and then, uh, the third act is like a horror story. It's the yeah. way that it feels, right? Like, he goes berserk, and he's able to break the control of the professor. So he starts going after each one of them. He kills, like, all the guards uh, in that image that I showed. Like, there's some really awesome and just beautiful images. Oh, yeah. And he goes after the three people that are responsible for this. Mainly the guy, right? Mainly Dr. or the professor, which, by the way, he has a name, but during this time, he is just known as the professor. So we won't we won't, we won't talk about that stuff yet because that stuff doesn't have I, I, I don't want to spoil it. Not that it's a huge spoiler or anything, but I don't want to spoil it for anybody that hasn't read anything past this. Uh, but that his full name and all that is revealed later on. And there is. Right, because Cor- even um, Cornelius. The- yeah, even Cornelius was kind of reluctant to really... Right, he didn't want to shoot him, and then the professor yeah, just smacks the back of his head. He was pathetic too, right? Because he's like, well, we should help this guy. It doesn't really feel right. I didn't set up for this. I didn't set up for murder or this weapon. Mm-hmm. But when push him to shove, he kind of listened to the professor, and then he gets himself killed. Right. And not killed, but you know what I mean. 
Well, yeah, he ends up killing Cor uh, Cornelius, and then yeah. he goes after Hines and the professor, and professor uses her as bait yeah. to try to kill him, pushes her over. You know, he's like, try not to break your neck. <laughs> what a douchebag. Uh, but he uses her as bait, and knowing Wolverine, I'm sorry, that's the beauty of this story, too. It's like you don't see you 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 never hear the name Wolverine. You never hear any of his catchphrases. You know you don't hear "Let's go, Bub" or or uh, you know your funeral or anything like that. All those uh, Claremont tropes. He never dons the costume. This is literally like set in this time that we don't know, right? I think the only clue well, that we he's what that like. I mean, he's already obviously had his abilities. He, well, he worked, they mentioned him working for the government and things like that. Uh, we know that. Let me see. He, this we get a little bit of this little where the little roadster, kind of maybe unless he's a collector of classic cars, right? Kind of yeah. places the time of when this takes place. Because I was assuming that, like, I mean, this is just when the adamantium gets put into him, right? Yes. So, well, it's that, and also the false memory implants. Right, because okay. he was surprised, but also I mean, his his mind was barely there, right? After all those like experimentations, but when he could see the claws coming out later, when he's getting kind of his faculties back, he's really surprised by that. Right, like, because he doesn't understand. He doesn't remember what what happened. Yeah, right. It's this is all new to him. Mm -hmm. uh, there's and then there's a couple things too that I wanted to say. Like I love the way that this ends. Like, okay, so, yeah, he goes one by one. He starts killing them. He ends up going after, you know, the professor. Awesome. And by the way, I'm showing this in omnibus format. Maddie read it in... Uh, Our digital. Yeah, yeah read um, For those in the comments, you're wondering how you can read this. You don't have to just read in the omnibus. They do have a trade just for this. Mm -hmm. um, or if you're looking to read it digitally um, on Comixology Unlimited, uh, you're able to purchase just this uh, to read it. I yep. did not find it in... Marvel Unlimited, but I may have been looking in the wrong place. It's not exactly a easy <laughs> to navigate. Marvel Unlimited isn't. Mm -mm. And then, you know, uh, after killing the professor, you find out, wait, it's just a simulation. Mm -hmm. So he's really going after that Bengal tiger that I've been talking about. All in the nude, as you do when you're fighting a animal like that. I mean, it was chopping like grizzly bear's head off. Oh, I love this story. And then the simulation turns out, you know, oh, wait, he's actually on the loose. You know, he's coming for us. And that's kind of where it ends. It, it ends in like this. So, like, seriously, it's 126 pages or so. Mm -hmm. This will take you no more than 45 minutes to read. Oh, and then yeah. another 10 minutes to go back and appreciate the artwork, you know. And it, It's a quick yeah, read. I, I, I love re reading it. Taking my time just because of the artwork and because it's so well written, too. Like, I really think that, like, as far as the dialogue and, and then all, not, not just the dialogue and the story, but how all the panels are placed, I think was really well done and really added to the whole like feeling and ambiance of the whole thing. If that makes sense, yeah, it, just, I, well, it felt very almost cinematic. Like, like he did such a good job of really giving you the feeling that you're there. And like, without even having, like you, you can understand what Logan's going through even without Logan speaking that much. That's a really good point. And I think it's oh. all shown because of the artwork. Yeah. Like you can see him suffer. From, uh, and, the, and then the humanity in his eyes at the very end, when he's looking at Heinz, right? He's like, I don't want you. I want him like the forgiveness and compassion because she's scared. She's like, you're, please don't kill me. Or if you're going to, no, she says, please make it quick. Cause I don't, I don't want to hurt. There's some yeah. really good dialogue in here. Oh yeah. Uh, it is. It's a, it's a deeper read. And I, and I forget because when I told you, I think I, I told you last week, I'm like, it's a really quick read, but it's such a deep read. Right? Well, yeah. There's a lot there. You know, it's not just one, cause there's a lot of quick reads that are really good, but there's not a lot to discuss. But I think, this is an exception because there's a, there's so much going in there and there's so much being said that's not being said. You know, like mm -hmm. this is one that you can really spend time with, especially if you're already familiar with Wolverine, you know, but not if you haven't read the story. 
there's so much in here to, to have fun with and, and, and see. Because it's brutal. I mean, like, it's it's brutal and it's bloody, but not, I don't know how to it. Like, it's, it's not like it's too gory or missing the point. Like, it's, you know, some, some, they could just make this gore to be gore and be like, I'm Wolverine edgy, but it's more like, this is a man who's lost all his mental faculties. He's just acting on instinct and reflex and not on his own. And it's kind of sad. You know, you see him doing all these things and like killing people and fighting things, but it's, I, I feel like, I feel like, you know, the writer still, still gives us that feeling of just like how sad and hopeless it is. <laughs> but, and but maybe that's just me reading way too much into it, but I really. No, I, I think that's a good way of putting it. Like the, the hopelessness in it because he literally you know, coming you know coming into it um and this is the fun part about going back and rereading it coming into it as a like when i was a kid and these were coming out in weekly installments i was like no never in a hundred years would wolverine be taken down by you know three dudes and a gun no he would have fucking slaughtered them now, uh, now I can see like you know he was down and he was drinking and you know mm -hmm. things that were unsaid that uh, it, it's just such a like I said it, it's so cool to go back and reread these stories. Oh, yeah. That's what makes this show so fun for me, and the fact that you get to read it for the first time, so I can get your perspective on what you think of the story. Oh, uh, because yeah, because before this it was it was Wolverine popping claws going berserk, one liners. Which is and, boring. It's fun. What? No, it's brilliant. No, but but but, I'm but saying, yes. Like, you know, like, this was that, different. That gets old, and you know, I've always like every time we've done this show, you know, I, I've I've often talked about like how important it is to have those more humanizing stories for these characters and comic books because too often we get stuck right with you know the the big overall plot and action action action, especially in the big two, but. I really appreciate those stories that take the time to just go through like a very down or like humanizing story. Mm -hmm. And I think for Wolverine, that's important. I think for like, it's very vulnerable. And I like that. It's We need that with a guy like that. Like it can't, you yeah. can't just like tough all the time. Well, and it's really difficult to do that when you're doing a show like this, because when we do a show like this, we get we grab storylines, right? Mm -hmm. Like we grab the Dark Phoenix saga, the mutant massacre. There's not the like, there's not the in between issues for you to appreciate the downtime yeah. of like the the stereotypical classic X Men playing baseball or whatever, right? You don't get to see the humanity side of them. All you get to see is the oh, they're fighting. Trouble is co always coming and knocking on the X Men's door. This is the same repetitive thing I read. Yeah, but there's these giant like things that I leave out because it's just I don't think much people would read or watch a show like let's read X-Men downtime <laughs> right most people are familiar with classic storylines like Fall of the Mutants or Inferno oh. uh, not the although I am gonna I am strongly gonna suggest reading the Outback years but um, so yes coming coming into this and reading it again oh, love it every time this is, uh, like I said, this is before uh, Grant Morrison did some red, con huge red conning. Uh, this is before Larry Hama added to the story. This is before the Frank Terry run of Weapon X, the Deadpool run, even before even Deadpool was a thought. I mean, this is it. This was the classic Weapon X and the mystery. Who are these people? Are these people still alive? Like after the story was over, that was the thing that my friends and I would talk about. Like, are you, and, and then when Wolverine 47. And like the, the preview of Wolverine 47 came out, we were like, oh my God, they're going back to Weapon X. It's the return of Weapon X. And and, and they're going to solve all, no, they never really solve all the answers. Like what's real or what's not, you know, what, what of his past is real. Even, even in the, oh God, the Brian Michael Bendis, uh, I remember everything splash page of House of M. Uh, it's still, no, they're, oh. Nobody can do that story justice, no matter what. And they gave it to Daniel Way for some reason in that shitty Wolverine origin series. But that's another story. Um, it's just, it's a mystery, and that's the way it should be. His past doesn't need to be explained. Yes, little fragments can come, you know, appear here and there. And I love that about it. I love that this this is a possible 
yes, this really happened, and and now other writers have made it canon. Like, no, this is this is what happened. But man, to go back and just reread this, the I love how brutal it is, and I love the fact that he he went in there and colored it. Oh, it was awesome! Beautiful, like man, those colors are perfect. They're perfect. Like you, you see know, a like, lot of you see a lot of dudes cosplaying the uh, the classic costume too, where he's wearing the uh, this one here, the helmet. Oh yeah. The half naked daddy <laughs> Wolverine. It's a pretty badass uh, outfit, and you know you've seen toys of that for such a ridiculous helmet that really didn't do much. <laughs> like that thing has uh, been, uh, you know. Now part of pop culture. Um, so, uh, here in a few minutes, we're going to ask a question to the chat. And those first 20 people that answer correctly will have a chance to win a $50 gift card to CheapGraphicNovels.com, who is sponsoring this particular episode. So good luck to everybody. Stay tuned. I promise not to make the answer or the question too difficult. All you have to do is just pay attention to this episode. But, Maddie. Yeah. Would you give this book out of 10? Or this story? This particular story, include, you know, t- keeping in mind the, the not just the art, but the, yeah. uh, the, the dialogue and the story itself. What would you give Weapon X? Uh, you know, I, I, I'm leaning towards a 10. Wow, a 10. Yeah, I really like it. I mean, I don't, I don't have anything about it that I don't like. Now, granted, that's sometimes easy to do with a shorter read like this. But I think it was very well done. Okay. Really like that's a 10 out of 10 from Maddie. And anybody in the chat, please, if you've read this, what would you give this out of 10? And even if you're not joining us live, leave those comments down below. Uh, for me, I give this a 10 out of 10. It's still as good as it was when I was a kid. It's great. Well, when I first opened it, I thought, like, when I saw those colors, I, I was like, wait, has this been redone? It's like, you know? And when I figured out it was the <laughs> Colors are really good. Maybe some like art touch up, like by uh, but I mean not the colors haven't been redone. They're the original colors that they used. Uh, now the trade, the cover of the trade paperback, you know that has new colors. But yeah, this uh, it it's such a weird, perfect, creepy origin story. I, I love it. It's so unique as opposed to something like Year One, you know, where it's Year One is pretty straight and forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, I loved it. There's a couple of things that I can take it down to 9.5, but I mean, let's be serious. It's To me, this has always been a 10 out of 10 story. I'd love to, you know what? I'd love to see this in a big, one of those big monster size books, like the Jim Lee XXL or the Marvel's monster size um, book. That would be so freaking awesome. It would definitely do very, very well that way. Um, I think a lot of people would probably uh, would appreciate it in that in that way. Somebody, D- Django Fed is saying the colors need to be redone. And see, and he, here's where, um, and that's you know that's your opinion. But then, and then this is mine. I think the colors are perfect. I think the colors are perfect so much so that I hate the fact that Maddie read it digitally because yeah, yeah. you kind of miss the grittiness of the uh, of the texture, right? Like it's weird. I know there's no difference, like mentally, there's no difference in in this and then what you read digitally. But to me, for some reason, like because I, I I I read it digitally a couple of years ago when I was traveling, um, and I was like, this just doesn't feel the same. So it's it's one of those things that I was like, oh yeah, I think I prefer it. Yeah, and I prefer all my books uh, physical. But to me, I think something like this benefits from being either in trade paperback format or in original comic format or an omnibus format. Maddie put Omar in a corner, forced to say 10 out of 10. I wasn't forced to say it. <laughs> no, I, I don't want the Disney reboot of this. No, not at all. No, I like I that they re- more Wolverine movies. Sorry. Oh, I want to keep sure. reading about Wolverine, but I'm deaf. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure. That, uh, you know what? I don't think I fell asleep through the second one. 
the Wolverine. I watched Logan, and everybody loved that, and I was like, it's okay. And I remember getting a lot of flack from that from my friends. They were like, what? You're the Wolverine guy. How did you not love that movie? And I'm like, I just thought it was okay, guys. Well, you know, it's it's the it's these franchises laying too hard on one character. And usually when they do that, it makes me not like it as much. So I'm like, well, I get it. But there's other characters now, and I want to take a break. And I want to focus on other ones. Well, there's plenty oh. of other characters. Exactly. Yeah. Could we see this, something like this in the soft cover treasury edition size? Sure, I think this is one of those, Weapon X is one of those stories, like I said, that has been collected since 1992 in a trade paperback movie, or a trade paperback format, and then, you know, hardcover, oversized hardcover, omnibus, and I'm sure it'll make it into the epic. It's not, yeah, it's not in the epics yet. But, okay, now, let's do a question. First 20 people, so everybody get your fingers ready. We just read Weapon X, right? Where everybody refers to him as Logan. But that was retconned in a series called Origin. What is his full name in that series that was written by Paul Jenkins? And Wolverine Origin, not the Daniel Way run, but what was what is Wolverine's full name according to that retcon? That is the question. Easy as pie. He'll always be Logan to me. But let's see some answers. Oh, you got it. I I made it fair too. The first twenty people, all they have to do is just copy and paste if they're paying attention. And I'll put in a random number generator. Whoa, it's going so fast. <laughs> random number generator. Good luck to everybody. Whoa. I was counting. Oh, you got it, Maddie. You got it under control. You got 20, Maddie? Are you keeping tabs? Yeah, there's 20. 20. Okay. Everybody stop. Thank you so much for entering. By the way, there is going to be another give uh, big giveaway coming up soon. It's, uh guess, the Marvel celebrating the 300th uh, Marvel Masterwork coming out. And all you uh, have to do, and you guys get a sneak peek. Speak. Speak sneak peek at that and that the question is just guess what the 300th masterwork is going to be you don't have to tell me the volume number you just have to guess the character that's it and i'll announce that contest later on and there's a chance to win some omnibu some trade paperbacks and some variant covers so keep coming back to the channel for that all right random number generator the first 20 people like i promised uh let me share my screen so make sure I know. Are you frozen or am I frozen? Yeah, what am I is it your? I, I like that. Yeah, I don't know any of your cousins, so I guess technically they could be. Um, so one out, one out of twenty. Here we go. Generate number eighteen. Damn. Number eighteen, Maddie. Who's that? I'm sorry, you got to count to eighteen. That's not that bad. Remember when I used to do this? Like first forty people, and you were like, "I hate you." Larry. Larry one. Yeah. Well, hell's bells. Congratulations. Congratulations, Larry. Please email us at nearmintcon at gmail.com. Nearmintcon at gmail.com. Right there. Congratulations. Okay. Uh, smart luck. I agree. But, uh, you know, people still collect them. There's a lot of people that still collect them. For some reason, I thought a lot of people had given up on those, but they still sell. Um, so congratulations, Larry. Thank you, everybody, for entering. Like I said, uh, there's going to be a giveaway sometime really soon. I'll probably announce it on Saturday with the rules, and so stay tuned for that. I'll be giving away some Omnis, uh, some trade paperbacks, and some variant covers. More importantly, Omar, did you read Aquaman Death of a Prince? I did. That story is dark. If you've never read it, Holy shit. I wasn't like, I read that for the first time. I think I read it like 10 years ago and it was, um, it wasn't what I was expecting, man. 
it was a dark story because Aquaman's kid was a baby. Like, he wasn't, like, a teenager or anything. It was pretty rough. Darker than Weapon X? Mm, sadder than Weapon X. Darker isn't really, you know. Masterworks are oversized? No, they're not. They are your standard size trade paperbacks. Uh, I may do a video of one. Maybe I might get Dazzler, just because it's Dazzler. That's the first time she's ever been collected in anything. So, uh, so I'll do a comparison to show you how big they are. They are just, uh, like Smotluck said, they're very pricey. But that's here. Oh, I'll tell you all the secrets since you all are watching live. So a little bit of the secret is the Masterworks are so pricey because there's a lot of love that goes into them. Like rebuilding, restru like just so much of it has to be retouched. Right, you're talking about an old comics, putting into them like digitally, and then touching them up and cleaning them up. Right, that's why they're so pricey. The good news is, after that, we have it digitally, and after digitally, we usually get an epic collection and an omnibus collection, making it easier and keeping those price points down of the epic collection and the uh, uh, omnibus collections. However, in some cases, the artwork gets touched up in the epic collections first before they make it into the masterworks so that's kind of where like that's why epics are so like they don't really make a lot of money on those epics and the fact that they're actually reprinting them is a real blessing by the way because the epics cost as much money to produce almost i'm sorry almost as much money to produce as a marvel masterworks and you all know those marvel masterworks sell for 75 to 100 dollars each have less page count and they just have hardcovers so uh, the, the paper quality on those masterworks are top notch, though. So I will say that about them. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. Like, they cost as much money to uh, make as one of those uh, masterworks. So. All right. Larry's on top of the game. We'll take care of you, Larry. We will let them know. I think all we need is your email address. Uh, so what's everybody doing? How's everybody doing this evening? Maddie? Oh. You're the only one that's so going to back so far. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, looks like uh, Freddy read most of Tilly Walden, including on a sunbeam. Yay! Uh, only that, missing... Huh? That's the one that you all did, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. I'm a Tilly Walden ride or die fan now. I love her. You know, I thought about you the other day when I was on the beach. I was reading uh, P PTSD, which is yeah. a first second book, and you were like, "You don't." You you were saying I didn't have enough first second books, and I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." And then I forgot, like one of my fir favorite first second books, or one of my favorite books I read two years ago was a first second book, and of course now it just completely slipped my mind. So forgot what I was going to say. Damn it. They're just great. I have yet to find one that I didn't like. That you didn't like? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they put out some really good stuff. Yeah. Wolverine, Epic Collection, or the Omnibus? Tough, tough. Uh, I love our oversized artwork, so I'm going to say Omnibus for me. But I completely get it if people go the Epic route on it. Um, I think they still haven't reprinted that Volume 1 of the Epic Collection, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but I think it's still out of print in the volume one of the Epic Collection. Um, Justin was asking about the statue behind me. I assume you mean this one. You can see that is a Wonder Woman. It's Wonder Woman um, by Sideshow. It's a premium format. And then also back here is my Gotham City Garage Wonder Woman, which is a big favorite. And the one directly behind me, Don and Troy, bust. Where? Yep, there. Ding, ding, ding. It was Castle in the Stars. Thank you, Freddy. Oh, I love those. Those are so good. It's a damn shame we only get one a year, but they're wonderful. Yes, uh, Colin, uh, there has not been a reprint of Madripoor Knights. Yes. Now, there could be. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Curtis and I are going to 
let you all know what the new epics are going to be. And that is at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. But we don't have a list of the reprints yet, but we know that they're coming. Marvel's going to reprint some more of epics. Uh, looking after my youngest nephew and raining very heavy in my local hometown here in Australia. Dude, what time is it in Australia, Shadow? Those are some awesome statues, Maddie. Thank you. Ross, you can ask Maddie and I how our absolute swamp thing binding is holding up. We both Still, read it recently. I haven't had any problem with it. Um, other than the little, the, the very first part of it, everything is completely awesome. Like it's it's holding up. Knock on wood. Uh, I hope you know they fix the issues with volume two. Uh, no epic reprints announcement tomorrow. Then just new ones. Correct. Correct, correct. Just new ones. But uh, we know there's there's going to be some. We know there's going to be reprints because they have been reprinting them recently. Predictions on <laughs> X-Men. Guys, we're in January of 2020. We're already thinking of 2021. Oh, man. Now you're all thinking like me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd love to play that game. Maybe a couple months from now. I still need to take a breather <laughs> from all those announcements I made. Um. I'm waiting on a Ghost Rider epic collection. Me too, man. Me and uh, Curtis and I were talking about that. How would you collect it? Would you go with the Johnny Blaze run? Would you do the Danny Catch? Would that all be the same chronological run? Oh, uh, let's see. Justin, so Omar, when Marvel sends you copies of Uncanny X-Men Omni's reprints to review, will you do giveaways? Of course I do. I uh, There's a couple things that I do that I think a few of you know. And I think... Uh, I don't mind letting the cat out of the bag. Every once in a while, I just pick somebody randomly out on the comment section and say, hey, email me your address. And I send them a nice care package. I do that uh, once every month. So if it's random, uh, so always check your my replies because I remember two times I, I did that and nobody replied back to me. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I guess you don't want anything. Or maybe you think I'm a creep. I'm going to mail you something weird. But all I was going to do was mail you some books. I had like some uh, epics Marvel sent me that I don't really collect. And I was, you know, I'd rather give it to, to somebody that watches the channel. Uh, I don't announce those. Those aren't big giveaways. I just sneak them into the comments section from time to time. I was a dude that like, you know, grew up pretty poor. So I do not mind paying it forward. It's, it is my pleasure. Marvel treats me really kindly. So uh let's see how accurate do the contents of the three marvel masterworks convert to the omni should we expect uncanny mmw 1 10 through 12 to be the same content of uncanny volume 4 no <laughs> I, I i really think they're gonna split those two omnis up i don't think it's gonna be one omnibus i literally think it's gonna be uh, Uncanny X-Men Volume 4 and then Uncanny X-Men Volume 5 that leads us into the Mutant Massacre. I think. I'm, I'm almost... I mean, if I were Marvel, if I had a business that I knew my fan base was going to buy whatever I gave them in an omnibus format, then that's what I would do, but I don't speak for them. You commented about my Dragon Con comment earlier today. Do you plan on going this year? No, not this year. Maddie, went, you, you and Tina went last year, right? No, no, it's Momo time, but um, oh, no, no. I'll be at C2E2. Yep, Maddie's going to C2E2, so go and I find her. She'll be at Gail Simone's booth. Or trying to stalk Dan Didio. Dan Didio better watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I should be allowed near him, so I think I'm just going <laughs> to... Um... Okay. Uncanny X-Men Volume 4 will be close to 10 through 11. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it'll be more like Masterworks 1011 with some miniseries and a couple of other little things in there to kind of fluff it out. That's what I think it's going to be. Uh, so 12 will give us 200. So Volume 5 will be 200 all the way to 209, including the long shot series, including like, a you know, annuals and things like that that lead us into the Mutant Massacre. But that's just my... I mean, like, I... I like I said before, though, I mean, they could give us a, I don't know, they could surprise us and give us a 1,200-page omnibus, because that's how much it would take, probably. 
to capture everything between Uncanny 3 and Mutant Massacre for completest sake. Just got my copy of Peter David Hulk Omni and Why the Last Man. Can't decide which one to dive into first. Did you get the omnibus of Why the Last Man? That thing is huge. I kept my hardcovers. If you got the omnibus of that, you might as well knock that out of the park. Just go ahead and get, like, that's one contain self-contained story. Do you think X-Men, The Gift, and Ghost will be the same exact content on Omni 4, or is there anything else that that you would add? There's a lot of things I would add, honestly. Um, man, they, these are all coming up with some hard questions about mapping. I didn't think about this. I should have. Uh, I, I was. I thought about doing an episode on how I would map it out and see how wrong I was going to be when the Marvel Collected Edition Department actually lets it out. Oh, he got the HCs. Uh, good, good, man. Yeah, those are beautiful books. I love those things. We need to do that on old reader, new reader. Soon, Maddie. Well, what are we going to read next week? You want to start there? Oh, and you. We also have a little bit of an announcement to make about our reading poll, the way we're going to do it from now on. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want to do that or you want me to do it? Um, yeah, I'll talk about it. So I'm going to uh, highlight Maddie while I make some faces. Okay. <laughs> um, so we've been talking about how to get everyone involved and kind of choosing um, one of our books for the month. So we're going to switch around kind of how our Patreon works. And so anyone who is at the $1 level um, can participate in a monthly poll. Like we're going to decide the overall theme. So like choose an Avengers book for us to read and we'll kind of give some options or choose whatever. Um, and you'll be able to vote in a poll um, for what we'll be reading that month. We did something similar to this uh, through YouTube uh, months ago, but now we'll be doing a more standardized uh, thing every month on Patreon. So if you're interested, check it out. So there you have it. Uh, for $1 a month, you can feed this child. No. Uh, <laughs> for one dollar. That's what always reminds me of. So, yeah, we decided to make our dollar tier the tier that uh, chooses what uh, book a month the old uh, old reader, new reader book should be. Because sometimes uh, Maddie and I don't feel like choosing or we argue over it. So we'll let somebody else do it. You know? Yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll put it on the Patreon. So there you have it. If you haven't joined the Patreon, you can check that out in the description down below. Um. So there's some more questions. Let's see. Why the last man surprised me? Way better than I expected. Probably my favorite thing he's written so far. Like, that Pride of Baghdad, solid too. Have you guys ever read the script for Why the Last Man, the movie? No, we haven't. I have not. Uh, Maddie, what are the bo Bat Batman books behind you? Um, it's what you got, Maddie. I've got Batman Eternal, um, the Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo, uh, on the list, and then a whole bunch of like New 52 and New 52 Features End and Injustice Volume One. That's what's nice over here. That's my little DC Omni section, although I have to I need to fix the entire bookshelf. I've got your flash here. Yay! Uh, Colin, we've done the Punisher uh, Welcome Home Frank episode. That mm -hmm. was... I want to say it was a, a month or so ago. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, for a dollar a month, you can feed Omar's addiction. <laughs> That's all it takes, man. I'm cheap. Okay, so... What's what up, you, Candace? Oh, Candace. That's what what are That's we me. talking about next week? Is that what you're asking me? Alright, let's kick off can't be Marvel. February. Oh. Do February. All right. So we're gonna we have the fourth, the eleventh, the eighteenth, and twenty fifth. We'll make mm -hmm. the twenty fifth the uh, on our Patreon. Okay. The fourth, the eleventh, and eighteenth. We we can decide. So fourth. Uh, you want to go DC? Do you want to get some from DC? Sure. Oh shit! Pride of Baghdad, Freddie. Sorry, it's a great question, but for me, it was Pride of Baghdad. No, a lot of people will probably say that it's Sheriff of Avalon, though. Yeah. Man. All right, Maddie. Um, so for DC, man, I think what I've been wanting to Ooh, that's a good read one, with you. That's a good one. Good choice, man. So much stuff. Um, 
Okay, let's do <laughs> Starman or ooh, JLI, JLI. Do I want to do Starman? Do I want to do JLI? Do you know how long that's gonna be? You're right. JLI is a long book, and so is Starman. I'm just I'm just giving you a heads up. If you want to plan ahead and do that like the third week, and okay, do yeah. smaller this week. I'm just yeah. trying to do you a solid. Because yeah. we are gonna we are gonna have to go back to Wolverine eventually in the X Men because I want you to read that. That's a really no, good and book. I still want to read it too. So let's can we pick? Can we do JLI or Starman like a couple weeks from now? Why don't we do JLI for um, great choice by the way uh, for the eighteenth? Okay. okay. Uh, let's see. We still need something for the fourth. Oh damn, oh, that's a Paul good and one. And birthright. Ooh. That's oh my wait. One. Superman birthright. My favorite. Okay, wait. Who doesn't like Superman? Uh, Kristen and, and Tina. Tina. Why don't we do Superman birthright for next week and invite them? Yes, because that's the one. I, that's okay. the one I think would convert them. Yay! <laughs> we'll convert them. I also like this choice. So well, because I, I didn't like Superman either until I read Superman birthright, and now I'm a huge Superman fan. Look, Philip, I just satisfied your hunger on Sunday. Now you're yelling at me to get on that? Hey, Philip, I agree. We need a lot of Jason Aaron on these, okay? Where's my Thor? I don't Where's want Where's my Marvel. Thor? Philip, I'm, I'm trying the best that I can, man. I got his Thunderbolts. Yes, I'm sure I will. Uh, they know. That was voted in the top 10 most wanted uh, reprint. So I'm sure they'll get to it. You know, it's like. Eventually, they're going to reprint everything, right? But it's just the thing. Like, mm. it does go, if you think about it, we were only getting one or two reprints a year, and that's it. And we were lucky if one of those was something that hadn't been reprinted before. So now, holy crap, it's crazy how many reprints we're getting in 2020. I'll just keep saying that, again, 2020 is the year of the reprints, baby. So you all be patient. I promise uh, more will come. Unless none of the books that I suggested sell, and then they boot me off and give Bleeding Cool uh, all the <laughs> all the choices to choose the next uh, reprint. Um, for the other week, can we do something either Image or Dark Horse? Sure. Yeah, I'm open to anything. 2020, the year of the Omniboot. Make that a t-shirt, Matthew. Make it happen. Hashtag at Twitter. Make that. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, any of y'all have any recommendations? <laughs> Not Wonder Woman by Gail Simone is awesome. That's definitely in my top 10 most wanted I just, books. Please, DC, don't fuck this up. Please let the Omnibus happen. <laughs> it's, it's almost around the corner. There's no just, way they're going to mess I it up. Please. We did Paper Girls already. Um, we haven't done Goon. And can you hear me? Maddie? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Same thing happened yesterday. I forgot to restart my router. You sure you can hear me? Can yeah. you see me? Yeah. I can move again? Yeah. Uh, I got excited. I guess that's what killed it. I was uh, highlighting this. That's Rick Remender's Magnum Opus. It's excellent. Goon is an excellent choice. Coyotes, Paybacks, I Hate Fairyland. Look at all these choices. I love it. Descender. Oh, you guys are great. Freddie wants me to make you read some Tilly Walden. I think I will eventually. Maybe maybe March. What's a, what has she written? That's my birthday month. I get to pick all the books that month. No, you don't. <laughs> Dark Phoenix um, all over again. She She's... Um, She's written a few different books. Um, on a Sunbeam is a really big one that's popular, but honestly, Spinning is my favorite. That's one that Freddie just mentioned. Okay. I've read all of her books so far, and Spinning is still, like, it just, ooh, it's so good. Guys, I love all these suggestions. Because I've read all these just ooh. about. Have you read Black Sad? Yeah, I love can that read, Can we read Black Sad? Can we read Black Sad? Hell yeah, we can. I love that stuff. Let's do that. I didn't know he was in Baltimore, and I didn't get my book signed by him. Mm. Lowe is great. Lowe's coming back finally. Harry's a Garfield. 
<laughs> I'd, be up, I'd be fun for some peanuts, not <laughs> Garfield. Can we read the Garfield that like doesn't have the like actual Garfield in it, where it's just him Gar- Garfield without Garfield? <laughs> yeah, those are. We're talking really... to like a real cat. All right, so. Do... I think either you. The hell did okay. we decide? Um, sorry, I can you. We're freezing, or I was freezing. Sure, Maddie, I was freezing. That's what mm-hmm. happened. <laughs> okay, to recap, next week we are reading Superman Birthright. Superman Birthright with Kristen and Tina. Yes, we will invite them on February the eleventh, and we promise we won't change this. This will be set in stone as of today. Yeah. On February eleventh, we're reading Ooh. that image book that Maddie chose. Black sad. Black Sad, which is Dark Horse, not Image, but that's okay. She didn't know that. I didn't know she was thinking Black Sad. So Black Sad, good choices, by the way. That's gonna be, that's gonna be your first non-American book you're reading that's not manga on this show, American right? On this show, I said on this show. Yeah. Yeah. And on um, the 18th, we're doing the classic JLI Justice League. International. My Holy boy. Shit. Let's see. In the Get house. ready for that. And on the 25th, we're taking it to the uh, Patreon for a dollar a month. You all can vote on what Marvel. It'll be a Marvel book we read next. So we'll create a poll and you can all make us read Civil War or whatever the hell you all want us to suffer <laughs> through. Uh, but that's it. Did we like Weapon X, Maddie? Let's yes, recap that. 10 out of 10. 10. Maddie gave it a 10 out of 10. I gave it a 10 out of 10. Uh, most people in the chat Maybe it's just me thinking they did, but they gave it a 10 out of 10. Damn it, Hayden. Uh, Larry won the gift card, so congratulations, Larry. Set your alarms next time when we give the gift card away next month. So, you know, don't miss the show. That would be kind of cool if you all can join us. But, um, damn, that's all I got. Mm, Join me back tomorrow. I'll be live with Curtis at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here to talk about the upcoming epics in 2020, the fourth quarter of 2020. And then the giveaway, the Masterworks giveaway, where I'll be giving away some Omniboo, some trade paperbacks, and some variant covers. Everybody has a chance to win. And you all get a sneak peek, and it's guess the 300th Marvel Masterwork. Uh, And I'll announce that on Saturday, and you can leave those comments on Saturday. So now you all get to thinking, what could it be? Wish everybody luck. Shut up, Philip. It's Omniboo. Look at all those 15 <laughs> Omniboo Marvel gave you. I told I told David I can't say Omniboo until he comes on the show, so I'm seeing I'm sticking with my Omni buy or whatever I used to call it. Uh the Mortal Kombat animated movie. I saw the trailer. It left a little to the uh, it was okay, I guess. Avengers the Cro- dude. You all know I love that book. Maddie's going to be like, what the hell's wrong with Omar? But I love that story. I was going to custom bind my Avengers The Crossing. And then Marvel announced it. Who the hell wants to custom bind Avengers The Crossing? This guy. That's who. Epic's Rule. Okay, I guess we'll go back and watch this from the beginning. I assume it was a good show. It was an okay show. No, it was, it was good. Come on, Philip. Did we ever disappoint you? I mean, Chad Omni Dog. Not Philip. Philip was always Philip was complaining about the Omni Boo. Mm-hmm. No, I haven't seen the Joker trailer for that. Ooh, Hulk the end. You know, we haven't read any Hulk in over a year, right? Me, you, and Amanda did Planet Hulk, and I don't think we've gone back to that character. Yeah, so maybe, maybe it's I did good, but I still wanted to read it. You know, I did have I a any She Hulk, or, or did we? Mm-mm. No, we have. We read She. Not Were yet. We- Omnibus first. Philip, but there's always a chance. What if she loves it? You never know. It's the best Avenger story I've ever read. This is the one I was waiting for. Screw Hickman. Screw, screw Busick's run. This is it. Avengers the Crossing. See, I've, I've yet to care about the Avengers in Which comic is books. crazy. It's crazy. Well, it's, it doesn't make any sense. There's no reason why I shouldn't, but I just I haven't. West Coast th- Avengers... It's a different story. <laughs> West Coast Adventures. Oh. Love that. Are you talking about the new one? Yeah. By, oh, I couldn't get into that. Uh, um, it's got my boy in it. 
who? Roy Harper isn't in the West Coast Avengers. I've got, I've got a lot of boys. <laughs> okay. I wasn't aware. Maybe I need a list. Speaking of lists, I did have a list of books we need to read. I need to find that. It's on the drive somewhere of yeah. like books we need to go back and revisit, like or a follow up to something that we read. Because I do want to, I do want to get from the ashes in there, um, in March, and that's the next X Men story I think that takes us to the mutant massacre. Uh, all right. Thank you everybody for joining us. Congratulations again to Larry for winning the fifty dollars gift card to. Uh, cheapgraphicnovels.com who sponsored this episode uh, Maddie what else What else you got to say yeah so thank you all for watching comment below later uh, if you had some thoughts about this and you're watching this not live uh, thanks to everybody for joining us today as usual we always love having you and hanging out with you highlight of my week um, subscribe if you haven't which seems unlikely but if you haven't what's up subscribe what's up uh, don't forget we have a Patreon, uh, which, you know, now if, we, if you do the $1 tier, you can help vote for one of our books uh, for Old New Reader a month. And we have Redbubble and stuff, you know, so check it out. Perfect. Couldn't have done it myself. We're on the road to 20000 That's right, Philip. Once we get to 20000 I'll quit the show and someone else can take over. Everybody, thank you for watching. Maddie can take over. She can read all her Tilly Walden books. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Hard for channel now. Oh, God bless her. All right. You all have a good night. Night.